guys and welcome back to another video review. If you're new here, my name is Theo and today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and review of the Nottingham Tactical Tie Clicker G2 Mini. I want to preface this review by giving full disclosure that this pen was sent to me by Nottingham Tactical. My assessment was not altered in any way as a result and all thoughts disclosed in this video are my sole own. Now these are high quality US made pens that you might have already seen if you're in the EDC game. In this video, I'll be going over the pros and cons of the Tie Clicker Mini, as well as be comparing it to some of my other EDC pens that I own. If you guys want a breakdown of how this is going to go, I'll throw up an overlay with some timestamps as well. Alright, so the pen arrives in a plastic clamshell tube alongside a baggie filled with some stickers and a receipt. Not the presentation you might expect for such an expensive pen, but I do appreciate the lack of pretense. At the end of the day, this is a pen that you're going to be using and not having collect dust in some fancy case. I would rather save that for my Mont Blanc. Now, moving on to the pen itself, I'll throw up some general specifications and dimensions over this. The pen is full titanium and comes in at 25 grams. It's definitely wider and a tad longer than most mini pens you might be used to, and this lends to the pen's robustness in hand. In tandem with the titanium construction, you can tell that this is intended to be a hard use pen. All right, so let's talk about what's good about this pen. First off, the construction and build quality are excellent. Bear in mind that this is a review sample, so we have to assume that I got one of the best built pens they have, but because I already own one of their standard tie clicker pens that I bought with my own money, I can safely say that this level of quality is standard for Nottingham Tactical. And this here is the standard tie clicker if you guys are wondering, just a brief size comparison. A good indication of quality are the engravings on the body and tail of this pen. So here you can see the Nottingham engraving, I'll zoom in so you guys can get a better look, as well as their logo at the tail. And if you compare it to the standard tie clicker, you can see that the engravings are very consistent and pretty much exact between the two pens. So very good quality control here. Now the next thing that I'm going to point out are the threads at the tip of this pen. Titanium is a galling metal, so parts that come into contact with each other will often catch, leading to grittiness. And you can tell that this isn't the case with this pen. And just listen. So very smooth, very quiet. And it's the same story with this one as well. And as a basis of comparison, here is a tie scribe. This is generally regarded as a very nice functional bolt action pen, however it's not one of the highest quality titanium pens out there, and the threads on this pen lend credence to this. So yeah, you can definitely hear that there's a disparity in terms of grittiness and build quality between the two pens. Here is a Fellholter Tiny Bolt. Pretty similar in, over, in terms of overall build quality between these two pens. The Tiny Bolt is the pen that the Tech Clicker Mini is no doubt going to be compared to, and this is because the two are such big names in the EDC world. The next thing that I want to cover are grip and retention of this pen. You can see that the Tech Clicker Mini, as well as its larger brother, the standard Tech Clicker, both use dimpled dots at the base of the pen for a grip. And I'll zoom in here so you guys can get a better look. And these dimpled dots are reminiscent of what you might see on a rubber grip on a cheaper pen. Obviously a real rubber grip is going to be a lot more comfortable, but I do like what Nottingham Tactical has done here. Unlike a rubber grip, titanium will neither conceivably wear nor get discolored with the gunk that rubber often attracts. And sort of going back on build quality, it's really cool to see that the fluted lines here um, are perfectly consistent with the oscillations and the dimple dots. So very, very nice craftsmanship on this pen. Now moving on to retention, you can see that relative to the Tiny Bolt, the Tie Clicker Mini has a much longer clip here. The advantage of this is twofold. I found that it often takes me two hands to get the Tiny Bolt's clip onto my pants pocket, whereas I can use just one hand to get this pen onto my pants. Second, because the clip is wider at the top here, as you can see, on the um, Tie Clicker Mini that is, um, it presumably puts less strain on the clip itself. So this also sort of plays into it being easier to slip the tie clicker to, into a pocket. In the weeks that I've carried the tie clicker, it's never fallen out of my pocket accidentally, but then again, neither has the um, tiny bolt here. A final big plus for the tie clicker mini is going to be the choice of ink cartridge. A lot of the times, especially with mini pens, you're limited in terms of refill availability. And this is definitely the case with the tiny bolt here. And I'm gonna pop this one open so you guys can see the refill it's using. The refill is the Lamy M22, and this is a solid ballpoint refill. It's definitely better in terms of writing than, say, the Fisher Space Pen refills. 
However, it really can't compare to the um, gel-based G2 cartridges. So yeah, it's a very, very tiny cartridge, and although it's solid, it's just not desirable when writing for extended periods of time at least. Now, the TechLicker G2 Mini uses what is essentially a cut-down G2 cartridge. And I'll pull this out so you guys can get a better look. And so you get all that smoothness just in a smaller package. And in practice, that means that it's a lot easier and more enjoyable to write for extended periods of time with the TechLicker Mini. Now, just as a quick example, I'm going to be writing with both, both of these cartridges so you guys can get an idea of what they feel like. So this is going to be the Lamy M22 ball point cartridge. So not a bad ballpoint cartridge, it's just a bit gritty. Nothing as gritty uh, compared to like the Fisher Space Re pen refills, like I said. However, it's just not as smooth as I would like for a mini pen, especially one that's already uncomfortable to write with. And here is the TechLicker Mini. So it's hard to tell on camera, but this one is a lot smoother. And anybody who's written with the G2 cartridges will know what I'm talking about. It's essentially the same thing. It's just a cut down version of the standard G2 cartridge. On the topic of actual writing, I can comfortably write with this pen for medium durations of time. You'll note that because of the tiny bolts mechanism here, it's very hard to get a comfortable grip on the pen. And there's really only one orientation that you can write with comfortably. This combined with the undesirable ink cartridge, the Lamy M22, makes it difficult to jot down more than quick notes with this pen. On the other hand, you can use a wide variety of grips with the TechLocker Mini as you would a standard pen. The clip pins still get in the way a bit, but it's a lot more comfortable than the Tiny Bolt, and the G2 cartridge smooths a lot of the things out. Alright, so this sort of gets me into the bad. It's clear to me that this pen was designed with the intention of being a mini pen that solves a lot of the issues you see with most mini pens. But at the end of the day, this is still a mini pen, so it's limited in its writing capacity. And compared to something like the Thai Scribe here, um, it really falls short in terms of being able to write for extended durations of time. Like I said though, this isn't really a fault of the TechLicker Mini so much as it is of inherent limitations. While it would be a stretch to write an essay with this pen here, I would say I can comfortably use the pen to take notes during a lecture. And incidentally, these are using the same cartridge. This one uses the standard G2 cartridge, the larger one, so it's very nice to write with overall. And same story here. Excuse my crappy handwriting, I'm just not really used to writing on camera, so yeah. The one thing that I can truly fault with this pen is the clicky mechanism itself. This is almost definitely a proprietary mechanism unique to Nottingham Tactical Pens. First things first, and to be fair, it's a really nice mechanism overall. When you actuate it, it's almost dead silent, and the action feels really high quality in of itself. So here's an example. Just listen. So yeah, really high quality action, and it's almost dead silent, which is going to be important because this is designed to be predominantly a tactical pen, so you wouldn't want to be making a racket because of your pen in the middle of an op or something like that. That said, the mechanism is inherently finicky, and it has a tendency to stick or miss if it's not depressed linearly at 90 degrees. And I, let me see if I can get it to do that. To stick. There you go. So as you can see, it sticks, sort of. Now, this issue will abate with use and as the mechanism wears in, but it's still present. Um, I can say that having used this pen, the mechanism has definitely weared in over time and it doesn't stick nearly as much as it used to. With that being said, um, in practice this isn't an issue very much because 90% of the time most people will use their thumb to actuate the clicker mechanism. But it's those awkward times when you want to use your palm or something else to actuate the pen that it can be annoying when it sticks. Alright, now let's talk conclusions. Physically, the TechLicker Mini is very much a mini pen, however functionally it punctures well beyond what you would expect. While I wouldn't recommend this pen if you're thinking about writing essays per se, I do think the pen is very apt for EDC purposes. The biggest hurdle for most people is going to be the price. Unfortunately, these pens sell out very fast and they're only more expensive on the secondary market, which is unsurprising considering the build it for life nature of these pens and the high quality. If you can swallow the price though, this is probably the last mini pen that you will ever need to buy. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe if you found this video review informative. Peace out.